Some more food for thought from me. The Washington Post has a slogan, democracy dies in darkness. Good line was born in response to former President Trump's fake news fire breathing, flooding the zone with whatever version of reality he wanted to spread at that moment. Now, I actually think that the metaphor is more severe than it suggests. Democracy is probably dead before darkness comes. I prefer the late John McCain's take. It is always darkest just before it goes totally black, meaning by the time it gets dark, you're already in trouble. So the point is we need light. We need exposure. We need the antiseptic light of scrutiny, if not truth itself. Can't let it get dark. I feel the same way about social media when it comes to our political dialogue. I don't want to censor or freeze out ideas, especially when they come from people who matter. See, that's a key. That's a key. Why? Because I want things to be said in front of me where I can deal with them. Now, there are distinctions. A member of the Ku Klux Klan, they're not getting a platform. Why? Because they have no value. They're just a hater. But what if the person's an elected official, someone who matters to our culture, and he or she believes ugly ideas? See, those I think you don't freeze out. I think those you need to expose and oppose. Don't freeze out, drown out. And yes, this does assume that the media tests, that it does its job. I take that job very seriously. And you all let me know whether I do or do not get it done to your satisfaction. And you know what? You should, and I thank you for it. But what happens when you censor or deny a platform, as they say today, deny a platform? Example, did Trump go away because Twitter banned him? Nope. He's been spinning lies about the election, and they haven't gotten as much scrutiny. Do we know if he had been on social media the whole time that he would be running again? Maybe not. Maybe he would have said something in response to the January 6th insurrection in a late night spasm or gotten more scrutiny leading up to and into the midterms. And more of the outcomes would have been obviously attached to him. A checked Trump is often a weakened Trump. That's why he prefers rallies to legit interviews. And that's why you may have done him a favor by taking him off Twitter and putting him down the dark caverns of the Internet where he can say things almost unchecked. I don't see the upside to give him a captive audience. And his reach was still pretty good. There was just much less pushback. And here he is running again. So it's not like the move was a huge win for his opponents, okay? And you have other examples. Kanye, now known as Ye. By the way, the reason I keep calling him Kanye is because a lot of people don't know he changed his name. That's why. And I don't want to get more me uh, emails from you guys saying, who's this Ye guy? So Kanye, formerly, yay, now, that kooky lady in Congress, Marjorie Taylor Greene, you give them power by banning them. Sure, Twitter has the right to ban them. It's a private company. But is it right for you? I want decency in debate also. I don't want a platform where insults rule instead of insights. That's not discussion. It's a shouting match. So should Twitter change? <laughs> Absolutely. It's a dumpster fire where nuance goes to die. And if it doesn't, there'll be a competitor that claims people like me and soon. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.